what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be taking a look at variadic parameters in functions so if you haven't heard of variadic parameters uh, it might sound a little tricky but it's actually a very simple language feature that allows you to shorthand your code even more uh, going along with the theme of swift to doing everything with the minimum amount of code so here we are on swift.org and basically variadic parameters is a way where you can specify multiple uh, parameter values uh, of the same type. And that allows you to pass in obviously multiple things without using a collection or multiple parameter labels. So here they've got an example with multiple doubles and these three dots signifying uh, a variadic parameter. So we're going to get started in a playground and then jump into a project to look at a real world uh, application of this feature. That said, make sure you destroy the like button as always. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer and let's get into it. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to get started by opening up Xcode here and coming up here to File, New, and we'll start with the Playground. A blank Playground is good for now, and let me go ahead and rename this Variadic Params. Hopefully I spelt that right. And let me go ahead and expand this window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let's get into it. So as we saw on the documentation on swift.org over there, variadic parameters is essentially a way to send in multiple uh, values of the same type into a function. So first and foremost, uh, we need a function. So cool, we've got do something. And let's actually call this add. Let's make this a more real uh, example. And let's say we traditionally had a function of add x and add y. And uh, it returns, of course, a integer. Uh, and let's, let me actually rename this to be sum. And of course, if we wanted to call this, we can say sum is uh, sum of, let's say, 12 and 35. And let me go ahead and print this results. And if we hit Command-Shift-Y and open up this, uh, we'll be able to hit run in a second here. But what we need to do in here is say return x plus y, since the return as a function is an int type. And let's see why this is complaining. Let's see, sum x, y, variable used within its own initial value. Uh, let's see, let's call this results. Basically, it was complaining that we called it sum here in the parameter, uh, rather the function is called sum as well. So if we go ahead and hit the run button, you'll see that we get the result out, which is 12 plus 35 is 47, if I'm not mistaken. And there we have it. Now, what if we wanted a way where we can pass in multiple values to this function to sum? So one approach is you could do something along the lines of have a collection of values. Uh, and this is totally fine. We're using an array here, but it might not be suitable for us to create an array from the calling site. So let's do another uh, approach, and that's using variadic parameters. So what we could do here is we could say values, and this is going to be int with three dots. And in here, what we can say is var results is zero, for value in values, results plus equal value. And finally, we can return, whoops, we can return the result in here. So essentially, we're signifying to this function, you can take in multiple values. So let's see what the calling side of this looks like. We're going to say results 
is sum. And notice you can pass in uh, multiple integers for values. So let's pass in one, comma, two, comma, three, four, five, and six. And let me go ahead and print out this result. Let's pause this playground and clear the console with a command K. So let's see, what should we get here? Three, six, 10, 15, and 21. So we expect this to be 21. So if we go ahead and hit the run button, we see that the result here that we get is in fact 21. So this is a pretty simple example of how we can use this variadic parameter to pass in multiple values. Now a key takeaway is the types of all of these must be the same. And we don't need to use a actual uh, array type to pass in these values. We can do it directly like this. So you might be thinking, well, what the heck is a point? You could just use an array. Uh, one point is it's a little cleaner to do it this way. From a performance perspective, you don't need to allocate another uh, data type, in this case, an array if you did the other approach. And the third reason is whenever you're calling a function, you might not have the ability to create a array before you call a function directly. And what I mean by that uh, will be exemplified in the next example we do in a project. So let me go ahead and close this playground. And we're gonna do file, new, and we're gonna create a project this time. Let's stick with a single view application and let me call this variadic add subviews. Let's go ahead and save it to our desktop. And first and foremost, what we're going to do here is we're just gonna set the background color to be, let's go with black. And let me just run this in a simulator up here to get this uh, building and booting. So once we make a change, it will be nice and fast. So let me go ahead and pick this iPhone 8 here. Let me hit that play button to get it building and running. And let's take a look at what we're gonna do. So right now, let's say we wanted to have a view controller with uh, a number of views. So let's say we had a, uh, a field on here, which is going to be a, let's say, a UI text field. And let's say we had a, a button, which was a UI button. Let's say we had a label, which is a UI label. And let's say we wanted to configure all of these. So let me actually use an anonymous closure to configure each of these guys. So bear with me a moment. Let's just do some minimum configuration. So when the things render on the screen, we can actually see them. So we're gonna give the button a background color. We'll say button is a UI button. And if you're not familiar with this uh, anonymous closure approach of uh, creating these things and configuring them. I've got a whole video on it. So definitely take a look at that video. Uh, and then for the fields here, let me just give it a placeholder. Almost done. So we're gonna create a field in this anonymous closure. And my copy and paste game is really off today. So bear with me two more seconds. All right, cool. So we've got these three things here, and traditionally, you wanna add all of your subviews uh, to your view, of course, so you can actually see them. And you would usually do something along the lines of add subview on the view. So we would do it for the field, we would do it for the button, and we would do it for the label. Uh, you can quickly see how this becomes redundant uh, across your whole app, right? Because your whole app is going to have a lot of views. And um, aside from just like the annoying factor of we have to type this over and over, uh, sometimes we might actually just forget uh, to include one of these sub views. So it just adds to our development time and a number of lines of code. And it's just kind of annoying to have this uh, duplicate code here. So what we can actually go ahead and do is leverage an extension and variadic parameters to make our life a lot easier. So we're gonna extend the UI view class and we're gonna add a function on here called add subviews, 
which is uh, plural. And this is going to take views. And uh, we can probably just do UI view in here directly. And it takes UI view as a variadic parameter and returns nothing. So as some of you probably can already guess in here, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say, uh, rather not return, for view in views self, or we don't even need self, we could just say add sub view view. So now what we can do here is let's get rid of all three of these lines. We can say add sub views on the view and we can pass in everything comma separated like that. So notice we go from three lines to one line. Uh, it's more readable, it's simpler, and it gets the same thing done. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And you'll see that we don't see them here. And the reason is, uh, is because we're not setting a frame to any of them. So uh, what I will go ahead and do is, let me actually set some background colors to these guys as well, just so it makes it easier to see. That one already has one. And for the field, let me give this a background of, whoops, background color of orange. And let me just loop over every sub view for subview in view dot subviews, subview dot frame, we'll say is CZ rect zero, uh, 100 times uh, I, we'll add I in there, 100 and 100. And let me go ahead and say I plus equals one. And by default, I will be zero. Go ahead and hit command B to build and hit command R to run. And we'll see that we get all three of our views added. So the first one here is a, uh, is a uh, text field. So we can click on it and the keyboard actually does pop up. Uh, well, it didn't actually pop up on the screen because we don't have that toggled, but we can type in here. This one's a label and this one is a button. Uh, this is kind of irrelevant for this video. But the takeaway here is using a variadic parameter, you can really add these uh, nifty extensions and uh, shorthand your code much more to make it more concise and readable. And uh, that's about it. There you have it. That's how you can use variadic parameters to your advantage to simplify your code and make it more legible. Uh, if you haven't destroyed that like button already, please do so. So YouTube has to go and fix the like button. Hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer, if you enjoyed the video, if you want to stick along for our daily Swift video journey. Comment down below with any questions, suggestions, feedback, any issues. Love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.